Hey Code Crew, what's up? Have you heard about Core Data before? It allows your app to store and retrieve data locally on your device. Handy stuff for sure, right? In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you very quickly how to use something called Realm Database. It also allows you to work with local data sets on your device and it's very easy to set up and use. Best of all, it's free because it's open source. In the next few minutes, you're gonna see just how easy it is to get up and running with Realm Database. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is visit realm.io. Go up to the top under products, open it up and click on database. Now the platform is a paid offering from Realm that offers data synchronization and other stuff like that. If you need it, you can check it out, but we're gonna be working with the free open source Realm database. So go ahead and click that. This is a quick start. It brings you to some documentation. So go ahead and choose Swift. And we can use CocoaPods to install the Realm libraries, which is great for us. It's so easy to do. If CocoaPods is something that's new to you, uh, make sure you check out the video uh, that I'm gonna display on the screen right now or in the description below, where I show you how to set up CocoaPods on your machine. It's basically uh, helps you manage third-party libraries and uh, to install and update and remove them very easily. All right, so we're going to set up our Xcode project now and use CocoaPods to install the Realm libraries. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project, a single view app. I'm gonna call this Realm Demo 3 because I've done this a couple of times now and we're gonna save it on the desktop. And then we're gonna go ahead and close this um, and then we are going to open up Terminal. We're gonna navigate to that project directory Realm Demo 3. Now that I'm in my project directory, I'm gonna use the pod init command uh, to initialize my project to use CocoaPods. Now I have a pod file, which I am going to open up in the text editor and specify that I want to use the Realm libraries. So if you can remember from the documentation here, the pod is called Realm Swift. All right, so let's go ahead and add this to our pod file, save it, and we're gonna go back to terminal and then type in pod install. And this may take a while for you if this is the first time you're doing this, but because I've done it a few times, uh, this part is really quick. Now, uh, we are going to go back to our project directory and open up the XC workspace file. And you can see under this pods project, we have the Realm libraries. At this point, what I usually like to do is build the project, just press Command B, uh, just to make sure that everything's compiling and that we're starting off with a uh, code base that compiles and builds. Now this could also take a while. So while this is going on, let me explain to you kind of how Realm works. Now we talked about Realm being a local database, so that means all of the data that you create, store, retrieve, it's all uh, locally on the device. Um, how it's all stored and managed is in this one file called the Realm file. So when you're creating data and you're saving it uh, to your local database, what you're actually doing is you're opening up that Realm file and then you are putting data in there. And when you retrieve data, you're also opening up this Realm file and you're grabbing data from there. Now, Realm has this app called Realm Studio, which is essentially like a, uh, you can think of it as a Realm file browser, which lets you open up any Realm file you need and you can browse the data. And you can also edit it and uh, you can add data, but uh, there are some limitations to it. You can't like change data types of the columns and stuff like that, but it's still better than not having it at all. Now you can download Realm Studio, if you scroll down a little more, you can see here, you can get a image of what it looks like here. And you can download it for a couple of different platforms. So go ahead and do that. I already have it installed on my machine. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll launch it now just to show you guys what it looks like. Now there is one tricky thing with using a Realm Studio to open up your Realm file, and that is that you need to know the path or the directory path to your Realm file in order to open it up. Right, so if you click this open Realm file, it's gonna open up a finder 
window for you to uh, navigate to your ROM file and open it up. Uh, I have a demo one that I can just open up and show you what it looks like. So you can see the classes on the left hand side here. Right, so in our demo that I'm going to show you today, we're going to create a new custom class and then um, that's going to show up on the left hand side. And on the right hand side where you see like these columns of data, each row represents uh, I guess a record or an object of that class, you can think of it. Uh, each of these columns uh, is a property of that class. So don't worry if this sounds confusing right now. We're going to go into Xcode and we're going to try this out. Oh yeah, the tricky thing is that you need to find the directory path to your realm file, right? But I'll show you how to do that very easily. All right, so let's go back to our Xcode project. It's compiled, succeeded. I'm going to go uh, into the view controller. And here in the view did load, I'm just going to write some code here. Let's import Realm Swift at the top so we can um, basically specify that we're using these Realm libraries. So the next thing we're going to do is to open up the Realm file for this app. And you can do that just by creating a new Realm object. Now, if no Realm file exists for this app, when it executes this line of code, it's going to create one but otherwise it's going to open up the realm file. Uh, and the reason we need a reference to the realm file, as I mentioned before, whenever we save data or retrieve data, um, we are working with that realm file, right? So we need a reference to it. Uh, so this is gonna give us that. Now, doing this can throw an error. For instance, if it doesn't have enough space on your device to create a new realm file, or maybe it can't find the realm file or something like that. Um, it could throw an error. So you can either perform error handling uh, or you can just do this and you can ignore the error handling, which is oddly enough what they show in the Realm documentation. Uh, but just understand that I think it's rare, but this could throw an error. And if you want it to be extra safe about it, you can wrap it around in a do catch block and uh, do some error handling for this part. All right, so this is going to return our reference to the realm object. We are going to assign it to a constant called realm. And now for the part about uh, finding out the path of the realm file so we can open up in Realm Studio, uh, we can just output it to the console. So we can find out what the path is to the realm file by going realm.configuration.default configuration and printing out the file URL. So let's give this a try. I'm going to run the app right now. And there's not gonna be anything in our database because we haven't saved anything yet, but we're gonna to try to open it up anyways, so you can see what it looks like. So now inside the console, you can see this part you can see our realm file is called default.realm and there's this path to that file in the simulator. Well, what we're gonna do is just copy that. And the easiest way to open this guy up, if you've already got Realm Studio installed, is just type open space and then paste that URL, or file path, sorry. And it's gonna open up that Realm file using Realm Studio. As you can see here, there's just a bunch of like system classes here, because we haven't created that custom class, we haven't saved any data to our realm file yet. All right, so we can go ahead, and close that. We're going to uh, now create a custom class and try to save some data to the realm file. I'll show you how to do that. Let's choose new file, choose a Swift file. We're going to create like a cat class, something fun. And we're going to import realm Swift, so class, cat. Now, the way that we indicate we want to save this class or instances of this class into the realm file, all we have to do is make sure that that class is a subclass of object. Now object is actually a realm class and it contains all of the code um, under the hood to save instances of this class into the realm file and retrieve it and you don't have to worry about any of that. All you have to do is make sure that any data or 
classes that you want to save into the realm file that you subclass object. Now in terms of properties of our cat class, we can have something like name, we can have like a color, we can have a gender. And if we want to save these properties into the realm file as well, um, they're going to show up as columns in the database. All we have to do is make sure we have Objective-C dynamic, these keywords here in front of those properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this class. And then in view controller, let me create a new cat object. And uh, let's use var because I'm gonna... name is equal to, uh, let's call this cat mo. Let's, and this is a male cat. And it's going to be, the color is going to be orange. All right, so we already have a reference to our realm file from up here, All right? So in order to add this object, essentially saving it to the realm file, um, we have to wrap this in a write statement. Now, every time you need to uh, do something with the realm file, such as, um, you know, you're changing it, adding something to it, uh, updating something in it, deleting it, something from the realm file, you need to wrap it in this realm.write statement or method. Uh, in here, we are going to realm.add and we're gonna add my cat, like that. Again, this method call can throw an error, so we need to either do some error handling with a do catch statement or just put, or just do try exclamation mark to um, ignore all of that, <laughs> ignore any potential errors that might be thrown. So let me run this now and we can take a look at the data inside of our uh, realm file. All right, so, ah, here is that file path again, it didn't change, oh it did change. Um, okay, so here we have our cat class on the left now, right, and we have this object, and we've successfully saved this to our, um, our realm file. Now if I run this again, This time, let me change my cat to Joe. It's gonna save it another, it's gonna save another row into the Realm Studio so you can see it there. So from Realm Studio, like I mentioned, you can actually edit the data. So if you just double click and then you type in black, so you see that changes. And we can do it again, Tom Gray. So it's running the project now and you can see it appear in Realm Studio. Now I wanna show you how you can retrieve some data. So for instance, if I wanted to get all of the cat objects back from my Realm file, I could do realm.objects uh, and you can see here, you pass in the type of the object that you wanna retrieve uh, and it gives you back a results object, which lets you, um, you can browse through your objects that way. It kind of works like an array. So objects, we're gonna pass in the cat data type. So the way we do that is by using uh, cat.self here. And let's assign this to, let's say, let results equals. And then what we can do is, let's say we're gonna print out results um, the first element, let's print out the name of that guy. All right, so you can see there in the console, it says Mo. Now you can also do some filtering. 
So for instance, if you want to look for cats with the name Mo, or you want to look for gray cats or something like that, there is a method you can use called filter. And so it works like this. We can say name equals and you have to wrap it in quotes like this. Now let's say, let's say Joe, and we can print out the number of results that we get back instead. So you can see here, we get one result. Um, if we change the color, let's say two of the cats were orange instead, you know, and you search color is equal to orange, then we would expect to get back two results, right? So you can see here that there's two in the console. Now, furthermore, you can also sort. So you can sort by certain key and there's different things you can sort by. I would recommend if that's something that you need to do, take a look at the documentation. There's a lot of good information here. So that's a simple example of how easy it is to read and write data in Realm database. Now there's obviously a lot more that you can do with Realm Database, but I hope this video gave you a taste of just how easy it is to write and read data using Realm Database. Now if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Just click on that subscribe button below. And if you want more tutorials like this one, make sure you visit my website codewithchris.com and sign up for the newsletter because I release videos to the newsletter before they get published anywhere else. Now I want to turn it over to you. Does Realm Database seem like something you could use for your app? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. Hey, did you join my free Facebook community yet? That's where I hang out along with a ton of other people learning iOS just like yourself. I also post early access to all of my videos inside that group before I put them on YouTube. You can also get help with any questions you're having. Visit the link below Click on the join group button and I'll approve your request right away. Alright, so I'll see you in there. Talk soon.